Oh. Man, look at the colors on, on that fish. It's the green on the back. That's amazing. Right. That is an absolute tank of a northern Wisconsin crappie. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another one. It is August. We're getting into the dog days of summer. And uh, today's video is gonna be using a slip bobber rig with live minnows, a rig that you can catch crappie year round with and catch a ton of crappie with. Um, I got two different setups here that I'm gonna explain today. Uh, but first, this video is sponsored by Two More Cast Tackle Box. You can sign up right now for your first month for just $1 and you're gonna receive a two pack of these bobbers right here. That's right you're gonna receive a two pack of these bobbers for just $1. Normally these cost, I think like seven or eight bucks. You can get it now for just one buck. Sign up, click the link in the top of the video description. Uh, I love these little three in ones. These are great. Um, but I got two different bobbers on and two different setups. One is a monofilament and one is a braid to fluorocarbon setup. So let's first talk about what I pretty much use year round. It's my go-to. These are both eight foot ACC crappie sticks rods. Um, 1000 size PC Fun Viper X reel. In my opinion, this Viper X, you guys see me use it a lot. Probably the best bang for your buck that PC Fun offers. I think the thousand size is like $35, $38, um, which by the way, you can use a promo code. Use flopping 18 to save 18% off on that. Uh, but this is, you know, this is a standard setup that I use. Six pound monofilament um, and it's just straight to a number two Aberdeen hook. Yeah, this is a uh, zone lock Aberdeen hook number two. You see there's a little bit of a weird bend. That actually helps keep the minnow on the hook and it protects the fish's lip from getting torn up too much with this barb. Um, just a uh, 1 16th ounce split shot. Hopefully you guys can see that there. And like I said already, this is the uh, Rod and Bob's little three-in-one slip bobber today. We're using the seven ace uh, slip bobber. Typically the the three slip bobbers that I use for the rod and bobs are the the shorty which is I think three-quarter. I think it's a three-quarter inch shorty. Um, the seven ace and the one inch. Those are kind of my my three go-to slip bobber, bobber rigs and the reason I use different sizes is if I need to fish in a little bit deeper water, need to upsize on the weight, uh, you can get a little bit bigger of a bobber. But this is a pretty simple setup. Uh, straight monofilament, nothing fancy about this. Uh, the one thing people do have questions about, let's see if I can get it out here. So this is the one thing people have questions about, the rubber bobber stop. These are what I use for the most part. I know some of you guys use the yarn or you just use braided line. That works as well. I just have, I've had better luck with this rubber bobber stop than than the braid line and the, the yarn. It tends to slip on me, the yarn stuff. So that's why I kind of stick with this. Um, the one downside to the rubber bobber stop, if your reel is not big enough, it will get caught in the reel. So it's kind of a uh, figure your preference out, you know, try out both things, the yarn, the braid and the bobber stops, the rubber bobber stops and see what you like. Now, this is more of the multi-species setup for slip bobber fishing. So this six pound mono, straight mono, is primarily for crappie bluegill setup. Um, I fished in Arkansas with uh, Kyle Lasseter. He's the videographer for ACC Crappie Sticks. He loves to fish with braid line for his slip bobber rigs. And I know there's a lot of people that have commented in past videos, like how do you set up a slip bobber rig with braided line? Um, this one right now is actually set up for walleye fishing. I'm using 10 pound braid to a eight pound fluorocarbon leader. Um, when you're using braided line, you're probably going to use a little bit bigger of a reel. Again, this is the eight foot ACC, but I'm using the uh, 2000 size uh, Honor XT reel. And uh, here's how the braid line is set up. Some people can just tie straight braid to fluorocarbon. I actually just have a small little barrel swivel here. That red bead on top, that's actually a rubber bobber stop, pinning my bullet weight to just above my barrel swivel. All right, and then I, I attach my eight pound fluorocarbon to that. Um, I'm using a size number one Aberdeen hook for this. Again, this is more of a multi-species. I'm gonna hook up, you know, chubs or even possibly a sucker minnow on this. Uh, this is your bass walleye setup. And then because you're using braided line, uh, you need to have something with a large uh, opening, a large grommet, and preferably a metal grommet like this. This is a wobble bobber. It's made by Phil. Cool thing about these wobble bobbers. A cool thing about these wobble bobbers 
it says the weight that you're supposed to use right on the bobber. Pretty cool little setup. But the most important thing about this when you're using braid, see that metal grommet right there? One, it's a large hole, and two, it's a metal grommet, so it's not plastic, it's not gonna tear up your braided line um, if you do get some cuts in it. This is gonna be pretty sturdy. As you can see, I've, I've beat this one up. I've used this quite a bit. Um, but these are really good bobbers if you're using braided line. So typically with crappie, I don't use braided line uh, for slip bobber setups. I find that the monofilament works just great. Uh, the only time I use braided line for, for crappie fishing is like a vertical jig presentation where I know I'm gonna be in stumps or timber and I'm gonna have to really snap those jigs to get them out of that timber, out of those stumps because you know you're just gonna get hung up. So. so these are the two setups that I'm gonna be using today. Primarily gonna be using the monofilament setup because we are just gonna be targeting crappie. I did bring some leeches. I did bring some leeches, so we could be throwing this little rig too. See if we catch some walleye, but uh, let's get, head down river. I got some spots marked. I'm gonna show you kind of how some laydowns uh, actually got pushed up in a little bit of a current seam and why those crappie are sitting there. Oh, there he is. There we go. There's the crop. Oh, wow, that's a good one. Yep. That's a good crappie. These are the crappie we came after today. I'll throw him in the live well here. Took a little bit, but the bite finally turned on. There's some big old crappie down there. Big old crappie like that. Throw you in this one. The thing about fishing river systems, there's a lot of bait fish. The bait fish are pretty big, especially this time of year. We're getting into August now. And uh, these fish are, are fat and happy. A lot of fish in the system, a lot of bait fish in the system. These crappie are nice and fat. The trick is you gotta convince them to eat a minnow, which is hard to do in a river system because there is so much bait. They got so much to choose from. Just hooking that minnow right through the head, just like that. Crappie tend to feed head first on bait fish, like minnows. Um, sometimes I go behind the back or behind the dorsal fin, but I'm just gonna keep going right behind the head here. See if we can catch another crappie. In order to catch these crappie, you first need to know where to look for them. On river systems, typically I look behind or the downstream side of sandbars or points that stick out into the main river channel. During the springtime when rivers flood, it pushes logs and brush downstream and they get caught in the backwater eddies behind or the downstream side of these sandbars and points. You can use side imaging or live scope or whatever sonar that you have, but these are the high percentage areas I would focus on. Oh, there's a fish. Another good crappie. These are some, these are some real good northern Wisconsin crappie. Ow, he got me. He got me. And those yachts got me too. Oh, he smacked it. Absolutely smacked it. That might be a 14 inch. We'll throw it on the bump board here in a second. That bite's gonna turn on as that sun goes down. Oh, got a little excited. He's still a stud though. 12 and a half. It's a 12 and a half inch crappie right there. Throw him in the live well. These are some quality, quality river crappie. See, there's a big old lay down. Right in front of me here. And there's a ton of different fish stacked up on it. But the, the ones on the roots of this lay down, you can see this is the root of the tree about 15 feet out. And you can see the main part of the tree laying on the river bottom there. It's a big old tree that got pushed in here. I'm just gonna throw this minnow out and let it kind of drift back towards me here. Oh, there he is. There he is. Not the crappie we really wanted, but it is a crappie. He's going back. If 
you do buy a wakeboarding boat, don't be like that. Please, please don't do that. The one thing you will notice, see how I put that split shot only about four inches above the hook? That's so that minnow doesn't really run too much. If it's a super aggressive bite, you can raise that weight up probably six to eight inches above the hook and let that minnow run around to try to trigger a strike. But it seems like, you know, bluebird skies for the most part, it's not that windy. The bite just hasn't turned on yet. There is a huge pot of bait fish. You see that? That's not echo. That is a bunch of shiners or something that's in this river system. That's what those fish are feeding on. Oh. I just noticed that bobber kind of went sideways. Crappie are notorious for doing that. This is a decent crappie again too. They're notorious for doing that. And what they'll do is they'll, they'll grab the hook. They'll actually grab the hook and continue to run up the water column with it. It's called a negative bite on a crappie. Not like a negative bite, meaning they don't really want to bite it. It's more of like a I don't know, super, sometimes it's a super aggressive bite. This is another solid fish. Well, it was a solid fish, now one back. We'll catch another one. That, that's the one thing about having lighter line and kind of a lighter weight setup, and even a lighter bobber. You're gonna be able to see that bite. So what the bobber's gonna do is just kind of come up like this. I just noticed I saw it twitch sideways like that. And it was in the down, or actually it would have been in the up swing of a wave, which typically means it should have carried that line and it actually should have stayed flat in the water. So the water levels like this, it should have stayed up and down as the wave came up, but it went quick sideways. So I noticed that bite. There he is. Ooh, that's a good fish, whatever this thing is. It's a big old crappie. There we go. This is a good crappie too. That's, I'm gonna need the net. I'm gonna need the net for this guy. That's a big crappie. Ooh. <laughs> that is a crappie we wanna end on. Holy smokes, look at this tank. throw him on a scale that is an absolute monster northern Wisconsin crappie right there I'm gonna throw him in the live well real quick and I'm gonna get the bump board out and the scale and look at the colors on on that fish it's the green on the back that's amazing all right get him on the bump board actually it's probably a female look at that 13 just over 13 and a quarter sorry I got some Got some waves picking up, but that is an absolute tank. Gonna weigh it real quick and then we'll get it back in the water. One pound, oh, one pound seven, six ounces? One, one pound six, we'll call it. Just over a pound and a quarter. That is a tank of a crappie for up north. Just shy of 14, pound and a quarter fish. That is what you can catch on some slip popper rigs. All right, well, that is gonna wrap it up for the day. Uh, wind definitely picked up quite a bit. That is an absolute tank of a Northern Wisconsin crappie. Just shy of 13 and a half pound and a quarter fish. We're gonna get this big girl back, uh, but the amazing colors on these fish, it's, it's summertime fishing, slip bobbered live minnows. You can do this year round, catch fish like this. Probably more down south than up north, but live minnow and slip bobber is a deadly tactic for the summertime. Be sure to click the uh, top link in the video description. You're gonna get a pack of these when you sign up. These are the, uh, the Rod and Bob 3-in-1s. You're gonna get a pack of these for just $1 if this is your first time signing up for the Two More Cast Tackle Box subscription. Um, I'll leave both setups that I used in the video description below, but be sure to sign up. Get these for just a buck. I think they're like seven, eight, nine bucks. With inflation, they could be more now, but these are uh, great slip bobber rigs. I use them for the monofilament setups. So be sure to do that. Appreciate you watching as always. Uh, if you got any comments or questions, post them in the comment section below. Ooh.
we got some big boats out today. Or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. That camera's gonna fall. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna get off the water because we got some big boats running today. And uh, this isn't just wind chop. This is, this is big yachts going by. So appreciate you watching. We'll see you in the next one.